Hi and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm. Right here on Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com where information never sleeps, as well as TammyPepperman.org. As always. We are listener supported. If you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Join us in chat. Visit our website. Uh, Hawk also has a store. Of course, you're listening to Studio B. We've got Studio A, Studio B, and the Hawk Nest. And as always, over on TammyPepperman.org, if you'd like to donate to our web development service, Please do so using the donate button under the No Borders Radio Player. Wow. Um, Rick Perry back in the news yesterday, of course. Uh, this is from the WashingtonTimes.com. Texas Governor Rick Perry's indictment on felony corruption charges means he can no longer carry a concealed weapon under state law. Federal law also prohibits him from being able to buy more guns or ammunition as long as the indictment is pending, Reuters reported. 2016 GOP presidential hopeful is an avid guns rights supporter and has said he used his pistol he carried under his concealed per weapons permit to shoot a coyote while jogging in Austin in 2010. Mr. Perry was indicted after following through on a threat to veto $7.5 million in funding for the State Public Integrity Unit run from the Travis County Attorney's Office if the District Attorney, Rosemary Lee Berg, did not resign. Of course, the story goes that she was nailed for a DUI, which General Counsel is good at that kind of thing. You go to the General Counsel's Texas website, you can find that one of their employees and associates is the Court Science Incorporated, the choreographer of every court case known to mankind. You think you're in court arguing whatever. In reality, you are just a negotiable instrument being used to discharge congressional bankruptcy and as Shakespeare once simplified and said, all the world is a stage. These attorneys are actors and jesters of finest sorts. Great at all that lip service and great at selling you things that you otherwise would not ever have thought to purchase. Such as the concept of subject matter, thing that never existed in a new space that was created by none other than the same action of psychological warfare upon you. It's an insane world that the attorneys and their psychiatrists created, the betterment of the attorneys and psychiatrists that created it. The news is very interesting. Obama looks like he's aged several years. Only a couple of short months. From RT.com, it was very interesting to see them speaking about sticks and carrots. Because, as we know, trolling the streets as the United States Congress in cars that are conceptualized and designed, called courthouses and other places of worship a ball, offering candy to the kitties in exchange for their patriotism. Marty.com, carrots and sticks. New Iraq crisis is part of the U.S. agenda to target Syria and Iran. No. Hearts and Minds is a very, very efficient war tactic tool. It has been used in every known way known to man since inception of politics. Fortune racial warfare, of course, is always perpetrated by one's own governing force if they're actually a corporation. And in this, the control of force, economic, social, political, allows the absolute control of the habitat and environment. And of course, after they do these things upon you and 
get you to, to where you're upon your knees, suddenly they come after you with hearts and minds. We have welfare, we have housing benefits, we have daycare benefits, we have free schooling. Come this way, honey. And after that long journey of being Job innocently following the Lord God there and Satan as it tricks you out to itself and each other. Well, you find yourself living in a style chain of events called the United States of America, which is only a set of congressional actions, exactly as it says in the Articles of Confederation, Article 1. The style, S-T-I-L-E, of this confederacy shall be known as, quote, the United States of America. Style means turnstile. It's a chain of events. Long set, long running set of congressional actions that maintain the same colonies as they ever were, farms, places to facilitate human husbandry. This RT story starts out by by hook or by crook or by carrots or sticks, the U.S. and its NATO and regional allies will not stop targeting Syria and Iran until they vanquish both. The crisis in Iraq is just a new phase in those objectives. The anti-government forces ravaging Iraq and Syria are mostly the same overzealous or gung-ho head choppers, rapists, extortionists, thugs, and cannibals that were pillaging and senselessly devastating the Syrian countryside with the aim of occupying Damascus in 2011. Well, these are the same FBI agents, aren't they? Raising a populace by which to teach it. You need a government. You need a government. Look, somebody's killing you. If they only told you that the FBI was on the ground killing you and that its handlers were laughing all the way to the bank because they knew right after this little conflict they were going to offer you a constitution by which to enjoin with them in their confederacy, oust your government so that you too can be in negotiable instruments discharging congressional bankruptcy from cradle to grave as well. 1941, this was all solidified in the Atlantic Charter. Roosevelt and uh, Winston Churchill got together and decided, well, Congress ca shall be the governing force globally. They had overtaken every place and every culture, every clan, every indigenous people every human being on this planet since Rome. Since it called itself Rome, or rather I should say, as Rome restructured back in 19, or 1648 through the Treaty of Westphalia, France and Germany and Austria, of course the United States incorporated, they had already formulated their banks, Canada and all of the others, Rome became just this big corporation with now new sub-franchises. Of course, you could see that over and over again with the federal state and the national state, the acts of enablement that allow the federal state jurisdictional hold over each and every national state, which is every corporation, every county, every province, every territory. There's a corporation located in the District of Columbia. Every ISIS, every Hamas, every Israel, all of these corporations are located in the District of Columbia and held under the steady hand of Congress raising humanity from shore to shore. This concept of time is a very profound thing because all of their charters are written to take human beings in the meantime. The construct of time zone, therefore, was a design of addressing human beings or keeping them in a location called a time zone. 
as you subscribe to these things, you put further and further into the past tense when, of course, you can seek to be and buy your rights from the same Congress who stole them in the first place when it kidnapped you as whatever indigenous tribe you were in the beginning. Of course, that is also the metaphor of Babel. Everybody was not cast around by God. It was Everybody was stolen and trafficked through the shipping industry and taken from place to place to be taught cultures and language and the psychology of the self created by their Lord God Masters, the attorneys, the same pharaohs of Egypt. The same Pharisee spoken of in Matthew. The same dragon spoken of in Revelation. Same heads of states. Same horns. Same Jesus. Which of course comes from G-E meaning earth and S-U-I-S meaning your. That same earth, your earth, so rendered by title through these psychological constructs. It's amazing that we are not extinct. The attorneys have been riding us for so long and pushing and pushing humanity into extinction because they know that we are the evolved species and if they don't cut our numbers ultimately they too turn into human beings as they evolve but then they don't want to do these things because as evolution occurs of course the frontal lobe is formed and therein there is human compassion and empathy for humanity without the frontal lobe there is nothing and that is actually the definition of sin. In Latin, sin means without. They're devoid of emotion. Sure has been an interesting journey. Rick Perry can't carry any guns. It's nice to see. He's, a, he's one heck of a predator. Being a shipping hub there in Texas, it was delineated through treaty ability, and of course, you would want to go back and look at the Treaty of Peace and the Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation. The Peace Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation. Uh, any treaty, the Northwest Passage was a shipping route. Everything west of the Mississippi, everything east of the Mississippi. Treaty of Peace half of Florida cut right down the middle so that children could be trafficked to that trade route system that Congress had set up. And of course trading children to each other through what appears to be countries. Portugal at one time was the trafficker of humanity. Then it was Spain and then it was France and it's been Italy it's been the British East Indian Trading Corporation. It goes back and forth. Well, why is that? Well, it all depends on market conditions. If your little culture has been groomed and you're ready to be placed elsewhere to maintain your culture and be pit against the next guy, you're going to be trafficked. You're going to be facing civil war created by the FBI. They're going to be on the ground killing you and your brothers and sisters and telling you, you did it. And then the attorneys are going to show up and say, well, whoa, you need us to protect you. You need a government. Here's what the Constitution says. And of course, that sounds all terrible and stuff, but it's actually the action of piracy. Congress is... Just a bunch of pirates shipping and navigation. It's been interesting, I can tell you that much. Um, 
Markets hit a record high again this week. They're not celebrating. I know someone is. Kim Jong-un himself loves Man Yu and orders state TV to illegally show matches. <coughs> All the North Korean citizens now can watch these matches on state TV, which is very nice to see. Very profound, profound man. Benedict Sturgeon enters guilty plea in child abuse case. This is Park Rapids Enterprise.com. Click on that. Sorry about the clicking, folks. A Benedict Surgeon had been Monday, Monday to placing his hand over the mouth of his disabled foster son, June 17th, in order to interrupt the boy's breathing for a prolonged period of time. Now, although I like to sugarcoat things, murder and attempted murder should never be sugarcoated in the media. He did not gently place his hand over the boy's mouth to interrupt the boy's breathing for a prolonged period of time. He was trying to kill him by suffocation. I'll continue reading. In doing so, Dennis James Sullivan, 50, entered a guilty plea to a charge of attempted first-degree assault in exchange for other charges being dismissed in the child abuse charge case. Now, when this occurs, you can guarantee that this guy is going to go on and he's going to be a foster care of someone else, somewhere else, under another attorney elsewhere because he got caught trying to kill a throwaway child. Foster children, of course, have been taken by the system, and they're up for grabs for these attorneys to trade between each other. And when those foster children age out, and they're no longer um, they're no longer uh, innocent because these attorneys take their innocence when they're no longer innocent and worthwhile for the attorneys to prey on and the child sex trafficking rings these children are whacked efficiently by their agents such as this foster carer I'll continue reading. In exchange for the plea, Prosecutor Erica Randall dismissed charges that ranged from third-degree assault to attempted second-degree murder, although the evidence says that it was indeed attempted murder. The plea calls for Sullivan to face between 37 and 51 and a half months in prison. He will be sentenced September 19th. He could face 10 years in prison and a $15,000 fine. That prosecuting attorney just took $15,000 for the use of a child's body. Just rented another child to themselves and each other. And this guy just happens to be the fall guy of that business schematic and shaking hand deal. He testified Monday in Hubbard County District Court that the boy he and his wife took in under foster care and were planning an, on adopting was blind, wheelchair bound, and severely mentally disabled. He admitted placing a glove in the boy's mouth in front of his tongue and behind his teeth so that the child could not bite him. Then placed his hand over the boy's mouth to interrupt his breathing, Sullivan testified. He said, look. I tried to kill this child. There's no pass and go. There's no um, $15,000 fine. There's no uh, couple months in jail. This child was the target of a murderer 
attempting to murder this child. His wife caught him, he testified. Criminal complaint states he then fled to a mental health center in Grand Forks, North Dakota that same day where he was arrested. He went to his handler, the psychiatrist, to ask them what to do. The psychiatrist enjoyed child predation. They did the same thing in such as Rome and they did it again in Nazi Germany. They did it again in Cambodia, Vietnam, North Korea, Japan. Psychiatrists have always, always, always been the bottom of the barrel. Cannibals. During the investigation, Sullivan admitted to torturing the boy in the genital area a month before the June incident. I didn't see any molestation charges or rape charges or any more time, including the attempted murder on one of my children. Sullivan's medical license indicates he he's assigned to the Wapiti Medical Group of Millbank, South Dakota, and that he is licensed to perform general surgery, trauma, and surgical care, critical care. He obtained his medical education at the University of Minnesota and became licensed in 1991. Now these predator doctors, they like surgery. They want willing participants to rape and molestation. And in order to get willing participants to rape and molestation, a child is doped up. That child is doped up by these doctors with the ability to prescribe these things. And if you'll all remember um, a few months ago in Indianapolis, Indiana, there was a daycare worker that had liquid, liquid, Rohypnol, uh, Demerol, or some something like this that she was drugging children with. Okay, everybody was pointing the finger at her. Said it was her prescription. However, it was in the form prescribed by doctors for children. Sullivan has been jailed since his arrest in June District Judge Robert Tiffany set Sullivan's bail at $750,000 unconditional and $500,000 conditional with the 10% cash in alternative. Judge Paul Rasmussen heard the plea Monday that ended the case. The child was subsequently removed from the home. Rebecca Sullivan has not been charged in the case. Defense attorney Michael Undam said he will introduce testimony at the sentencing hearing that will explain Sullivan's mental well-being. As a result, Undam said he would request a dispositional departure in the sentencing, meaning he will request a reduction in time. He was just doing his job, Judge. We, we need to get a ringer in there, a psychiatrist, that will evidence to you, Judge, that he was only doing his job as an agent and he was only going to off that child and that child isn't worth anything. It's just a foster child. It's not a human being or anything. It's just a foster child. Now, this article from the parkrapidenterprise.com is of course not a rarity it is the norm attorneys and these doctors rarely ever get caught as you can see here they never get punished according to their works as you can see here because they're trafficking children amongst each other the judge and the doctor have an agreement a pact this is what the treaties are. They're agreements between two banks to traffic 
in humanity. Now, it's up to the sheeple in that location, it's up to the media to present this in the light that it should be shown in, and it's up to humanity to protect this child, this innocent child that is part of the child trafficking industry that was almost whacked by this psychopath and his handlers. What it sounds like is that he couldn't follow through because he was caught, which he admitted to. Now, if you want this kind of thing in your neighborhood and these Stasi agents killing kids, keep voting for them. Continue to patronize these monsters. Give them your entire paychecks through the church and the doctor's office. And if you want them out of your communities, you need to raise your voice. This is what it's all about, Matthew 27. When these things are presented to you, are you going to turn on the murderer, or are you going to turn on this foster child known as Jesus? Who's going to be crucified? Jesus or Barabbas? Jesus or Barabbas? Jesus or Barabbas? And I can tell you, up until this year, I've been awfully ashamed to see the results of that choice. And, and hopefully, you make the right decision using your own discretion. Tired of witnessing these things. Tired of children being abused. FBI.gov. Oh, it no longer exists. Nice to see. It was interesting though. And I can see it on my Facebook. The headline read, Louisiana psychiatrist sentenced to serve more than seven years in prison for his role in a $258 million scam. Medicare scam. He's a fall guy, isn't he? Because it's not all about Medicare scams. It's all about the diagnosis. Now, when those children are almost killed and they're almost whatever, or they're raped, or they're beaten, or they're killed. This allows for a diagnosis, and the attorney runs right out there and says, Look what I got! RCD10, CMS.gov, here we come! I'm rich! I'm rich! I'm rich! What do you think they're playing on that market? Who do you think within capital, which means head, ism, is on that floor. Who do you think these attorneys are trading? And as the risk goes up, and as the production value, production value increases, and all of these things are insured by FBI agents, those children tricked out and traded on the market are filling attorney coffers. They're not taxed. That's the least of your worries is taxation. They are raping and molesting, abusing and killing children. Children, babies, our babies. <clears throat> Sick. Anyway, so the FBI took that one down. I would watch that. You can find it on my Facebook wall. Psychiatrist charged in connection with India U.S. human trafficking. It's just sick out there. Sick, sick, sick. This is on the DailyMail.co.uk. Psychiatrist indicted for luring 
Indian dancers to the U.S. and forcing them to become strippers and prostitutes. Female dancers were promised cultural exchange jobs in New York City. Victims had their passports confiscated and were locked in hotels while they were not dancing or having sex with clients. Riaz Muscuri, a psychiatrist in Texas, is charged with labor conspiracy and visa fraud. Labor conspiracy? My God, he's human trafficking. <laughs> Three other men were indicted by a New York grand jury. Sabja, Kimani, Rashmikant Patel, and Mahmoud Hassan Ali Dani. Texas psychiatrists and three other men have been indicted for running an international human trafficking ring that brought female dancers from India and forced them to become strippers and prostitutes in New York City. Federal prosecutors say the alleged criminals would find female dancers in India and promised them cultural exchange jobs in the U.S. But once the women arrived, they were forced to dance in nightclubs for 12 to 14 hours a night, seven days a week, and were pressured to have sex with clients, court records show. Charged with labor conspiracy and visa fraud by a Manhattan grand jury are these men, uh, I'm not going to attempt on their names again, um, between 2008 and 2010, the criminal ring kept the women in their service by confiscating their passports and locking the victims in hotel rooms when they were not working. Assistant U.S. Attorney Peter Skinner, who is handling the case, would not say where in New York City the women were performing or whether the nightclub management is suspected of any criminal activities. Now, hopefully he's not protecting any of the Confederates. More people are expected to be charged with involvement in the trafficking ring, a source told Mail Online. Mouse Curie, a graduate of the University of Karaki in Pakistan, has been licensed psychiatrist in Texas since 1986. Yeah, they're good there. That one woman who drowned all of our children in a bathtub years ago was seeing one of those psychiatrists pushing her into things like that. He has no history of medical malpractice or other criminal activity and his, his history reflects no disciplinary actions have ever been taken against him according to the Texas Medical Board. Well, of course not. He's great at human trafficking. He has an unblemished record. Unblemished. The doctor appeared before a judge in Texas on Friday afternoon and was released on $300,000 bond, according to KLTV. He's expected in at a hearing in New York Federal Court on Friday. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. Sick, some twisted folks. Is Ferguson feeding on the poor? City disproportionately stops charges and fines people of color absolutely so now that you know that what are you going to do about it are you going to patronize the local attorneys killing your kids are you going to call the FBI if you need help after they just evidence that they kill kids for you uh, specifically black children are you going to keep them in your communities worship them and go into their places of ball. Ukraine says it's being invaded by Russia and wants you to retweet this. Zayami's lawyer accused of bribing witnesses. This is on the low hood dot um, it's interesting. And my favorite, I think, of all time. Last night, Bo brought it up on his show, the Bo and Rocco show. And it appears there's been an attorney charged with being an attorney. And then, of course. Now he's charged with attempting to whack the informant, or what appears to be the informant, since that was the one he targeted. 
It's, it's been interesting. This guy's charged with baritry, which is the action of an attorney. It always represents you. It always negotiates you. It is called the negotiorum gestor. Baritry is also known as piracy. The action of bail, ballism, stemming from, you know, Marduk, the god of Baal, the god of Baal. You don't want to go into their churches of Baal. Those banks are churches of Baal. So this one is from the JDJournal.com. Lawyer attempts to hire a hitman in exchange for reduced fees. San Antonio lawyer Paul Andrews has been charged with offering a reduction in legal fees if his client will murder one of his former employees who is charging him with bear tree. If the allegations against Paul Andrews are true, it marks a low point in the legal profession. <laughs> yeah. A low point. Bear tree. I don't think it gets lower than charging an attorney for being an attorney. I'll continue reading. Not only was the San Antonio lawyer charged for committing baritry by his former head manager, Marion Arebi, in as of 2011 in a case that was to see trial this fall, but the frustrated attorney caught a deal with another client to have the Uribe killed. Andrews was therefore arrested Wednesday in Corpus Christi on a solicitation of capital murder charge. Uribe's original complaint against her employers Independence Andrew and his partner Keith Gould stemmed from being fired, as she claims, for refusing to solicit personal injury clients, also known as bear chasing. Yes, ambulance chasing, probate court chasing, death chasing, morgue chasing. Fender bender chasing, tire chasing. What attorneys do? Kid chasing, scouting, they're, they're constantly hunting, they're like trapped or spiders. I'll continue reading. The, the arrest warrant affidavit was released this Thursday. It claims that Andrews indicated that he would not mind if Uribe was run over by a car or killed. Andrews explained to his client that Uribe was a racist and did not like black people. Further, he showed that client Uribe's Facebook photo and a tax record revealing Uribe's home address. The client agreed to kill Uribe for Andrews initially, but changed his mind later after he felt that it was wrong for Andrews to approach him about the murder. Wow, that's sick. Murdering somebody is not wrong, but approaching somebody about murder is wrong. It wasn't for four weeks on August 12th before the client, who was working with Andrews on a racial discrimination case, contacted the Bexar County DA's office about the murder for hire situation. Oh, it was another attorney that rolled on him. Interesting. Criminal solicitation of a capital felony is a first degree felony under Texas law carrying a 5 to 99 year sentence. The DA arranged for the client to wear a microphone and approach Andrews further about the murder case. Quote, during the meeting, Andrews indicated he still wanted something to happen to Uribe and confirmed with the client that he did not have a way to pay for killing her without leaving a paper trail and came instead to agree to cut the attorney fees from the client settlement from twenty to twenty from forty to twenty percent, as Texas lawyer reported. Baritary is criminal. It's a serious crime under our state statutes and under our disciplinary rules, and people who engage in this kind of contact are criminals. One thing leads to another. You never know where it's going, says William or Bill Edwards Sr., who is representing Uribe in the civil case. Indeed, Andrews must have taken the charge rather seriously if he would consider having Uribe murdered to prevent the case from seeing court. That an attorney would resort to such criminal behavior shocked Edwards, who said he hasn't seen anything like it in his 56 years practicing law noting that Uribe was very upset by it. I mean, terribly upset, end quote. Absolutely. Uribe almost got whacked by a former client or boss or whatever. This is just sick. Attorneys are foul. I'm telling you. Sick. Sick. Vicious monsters. Vicious. Ugh. 
from kwwl.com colonia attorney arrested for harassing juror after trial coralville an iowa attorney has been accused of harassing a juror who found him guilty in a trial earlier this year coralville police say 50 year 54 year old raymond Tinian of Kelowna was arrested Monday and booked in the Johnson County Jail. He faces charges of criminal mischief, harassment, and tampering with a witness or juror. Court records do not list an attorney. The Iowa City Press Citizen says the juror reported in June that the words, quote, guilty and, quote, justice were spray painted on a home garage door, inciting police say an investigation into the case determined Tinian was responsible. Police say Tinian left a letter at the house that indicated he was unhappy with a verdict in March that found him guilty of disorderly conduct in an altercation case. Oh man, you you put a blemish on his on his good name. Man, these these attorneys are vicious. Uh, the one from Lohad, uh, Zamy's lawyer accused of bribing witnesses. This is on Loha.com. Carmel, Westchester, Westchester County Attorney George Gagano was charged Thursday with witness tampering and bribery in a case connected to the sex charges against his client, Mapac Restaurantour. Gagano, 41, surrendered to Carmel Police on Thursday morning. He was arraigned Thursday afternoon in Putnam County Court where a judge set bail at $100,000. Gagano was, also must surrender a shotgun police found at his home. He posted bail and was released by 6 p.m. Bribery and witness tampering charges are felonies. Balgano also faces misdemeanor conspiracy charges. The charges were tied to his dealings with a woman who claims Zami sexually assaulted her in 2012 and again this year. Balgano was indicted with three co-conspirators, including one who is not named. Assistant District Attorney Andrews Gill, in asking for $250,000 cash bail, told visiting Westchester, Westchester County Judge David Zuckerman that authorities intercepted a message in which Gill claimed Galgano threatened to shoot a Putnam Assistant District Attorney. Quote, I take that very seriously, Putnam County District Attorney Adam Levy said. Gill said authorities also intercepted a text in which he claims Galgano said he was, quote, going to knock off a gas station. End quote. Gargano laughed and rolled his eyes at those accounts which were not included in the indictment. The arrest comes less than two weeks after Gargano filed a $130 million lawsuit against Levy and Carmel Police alleging they violated Zamy's constitutional rights with his 2013 arrest for rape. Gargano's lawyer, Robert Al. Schiller said Levy is investigating Gargano because he was about to prove the prosecutors know the woman who claims Amy. Uh, and of course, there's an advertisement right in front of the screen. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, if you want to read more, you can go to lowhud.com. Um, sorry for getting off track. It's still a lot of news this week. Uh, very interesting happenings. Uh, you know, it was it was beautiful to see uh, this week as well. You know, Kim Jong Un has everything on his plate. He's developing North Korea, and he's he's a busy guy. Of course, they're uh, starting up with sports and things like this, and uh, it's Ski Resort will be open in just a couple months. <clears throat> but on abcnews.com, abcnews.go.com. North Korea calls U.S. graveyard of human rights. North Korea's government said Wednesday that the police shooting of an armed black 18-year-old in Ferguson, Missouri is evidence that the United States is a graveyard of human rights. The comments by a foreign ministry spokesman fit a pattern by North Korea of seizing any opportunity to turn the tables on Washington's long-standing criticism of, of the North as one of the world's worst human rights abusers. Now, during my time, I've been watching evidence come out of North Korea. The evidence is they do not violate human rights. You know, there was a while back, there was a, a video that was, quote, smuggled out of North Korea, which I don't think that it was smuggled. Uh, 
um, it portrayed a female vendor that was selling things on the street who was approached by what appeared to be an IRS agent or equivalent to IRS and she got mad at him and started chasing him down the street and beating on him with her purse and he ran away and the United States Incorporated if somebody tried that they would either be tased or shot by the IRS agent because of course the federal government now arms them against humanity and there's a very 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 um, line uh, a very dark line or a contrast between what the United States Incorporated has been saying and what actually has been coming out of North Korea and I have not seen evidence that North Korea has violated human rights he took a flamethrower apparently to somebody who was trying to infiltrate the government and in the quote United States Constitution it says anybody who uh, is found guilty of treason is facing death now, I haven't seen any violation of the public law because treason against one's own people humanity is a capital offense and under the public law it deserves a capital punishment I'll continue reading the August 9th death of Michael Brown and Ferguson triggered nearly two weeks of sometimes violent street protests in a statement called carried by North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency the spokesman called the United States a country quote where people are subject to discrimination and humiliation due to their races and they are seized with such horror that they do not know when they are shot to death end quote quote the protests in Ferguson City and other parts of the US are an eruption of the pent-up discontent and resistance of the people against racial discrimination and inequality deeply rooted in the American society end quote the statement said it accused America of acting like a quote international human rights judge and of course they are through the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Union that is the Human Rights Commission and said the US should quote mind its own business instead of interfering in the internal affairs of other countries now in related communications this last week Kim Jong-un said he's not going to enter into pact or treaty with the United States Incorporated and we'll get into that in the second hour of course um, I'd like to bring Bo on hopefully I can uh, get him on in the second hour to talk about many of these things because it looks like Germany is doing the same thing uh, Syria asked United States Incorporated to uh, disengage itself from its country and its government and uh, we're waiting for these things to occur because it, apparently the United States Incorporated is not listening now we have evidence from time immemorial not only suggesting but of course evidencing that this is their modus operandi the United States Incorporated infiltrates a country or a people from the ground the CIA products or produces a production the FBI runs around killing everybody and the attorneys on the back end poke out their head after all this is done and offer the sheeple constitutional theory and it's the same metaphor as you will find in Exodus Moses goes to the top of the hill after the sheeple have been murdered by somebody and stuff has been happening and Moses comes back down and he says you are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses therefore I will help you and you turn around and you find Leviticus right after that which is the action of taxation now of course this is a relative walk of humanity that book is not historical that book says look around open your eyes and see what is actually occurring now these priests say God said this God said that God did this God did this show me 
the evidence of where it is written that God did those things in the Bible. God is mentioned. God is mentioned. And in his place is the word Lord God. And you can go right now to 1 Corinthians 6 and find where Jesus separated the two. He said you can only fornicate by giving your body over to the Lord God. And God has raised up the Lord, so shall he raise us up by his own power. And you can go right now to the American Constitution and find exactly that. Power is vested in Senate and House of Representatives in Congress assembled. You vested power in Congress and gave up the garden God. It's very, very, very simple. Very simple. What's the tree of knowledge? Concepts. They tell you this law exists and they have the authority and you start believing it. What does it say in Genesis about that? Well, if you eat of the tree of knowledge, you're going to experience death. How can you be dead and living at the same time and walking around as Adam and Eve? Well, that's civil death. You're abjuring the realm. You've just lost the garden because somebody else is your authority now. And it says this in the Greek translation. Um, Wycliffe's version of the Bible is a lot easier to read although it's foreign in its use of language. You say God clepted, clepted night and day, earth and sea. And clepted is a form of uh, concepir, or to take, to grasp with the mind. Uh, conceptus. And that's what you did. You took up their education. And of course, it's none other than Congress and the Rand Corporation that brings you your education. Who, who writes those books? Who edits those books? Rand McNally. Rand is the defense corporation for the United States Incorporated. Why is their defense corporation educating you? It's not a broken system. Education stems from the word pedagogy, meaning attendance on boys. That is how you remove the firstborn son. You teach it to be a farm animal and to be subject to you, a government. You can read this in the treatise on education, otherwise known as Emile, E-M-I-L-E, -E, by your soul. It's all in there. It talks about the Spartans, even, Romans, Corinthians, Americans, French, Spaniards. It doesn't matter where you're from. 1941 Atlantic Charter said Congress has global governments. And of course, you come along to the 1961, John F. Kennedy formulated, you said, to develop undeveloped places which allowed the mass kidnapping of human beings and the mass indoctrination of human beings. And JFK was not a good president. He wasn't a good guy at all. He was sitting on the board of governors for the Federal Reserve right, right along with the senior Bush while he was speaking to you and saying, oh, the Federal Reserve is such a bad boy. It's a bad boy. He was cashing in. And again, with recent evidence of... Uh, possible dead people showing up elsewhere as somebody else. I, I, I really don't know if Kennedy is dead or if he just moved on elsewhere. They, they have a habit of those things. Nazi Germany, Ernst Rudin was transferred over into the American administration. We're watching it day after day through the banking system and each government is quote failing. Strauss Kahn and all of these things. They just move over to, into the American administration into the banking. They don't go anywhere. They're not disappearing anywhere. We'll be back after the break, folks. Stick around.
Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, Freedom Slips where information never sleeps. We are a listener supported radio station. If you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. We're also simulcasting, of course, on tammypepperman.org and nobordersradio.co.uk. And um, everything in between. Uh, if you'd like to support us, please visit us at www.freedom or sorry, www.tammypepperman.org. <laughs> I'll get it back to this news. This is terrible. Um, so many things have been occurring this last weekend, and I, I want to shine a, a spotlight on the United States Incorporated policy. As we all know, Margaret Sanger, for example, was a eugenicist. She was part of the original eugenics program back at the turn of the century in the 1900s. Uh, she eventually adopted or developed or created whatever it was already going to be, Planned Parenthood, which is a depopulation program targeting None other than blacks, black human beings. Now, this is not the citizenry. I am a very, very proud black woman who happens to have very absolutely, without a doubt, vitamin D deficiency to such an extent. Human beings are not racist. Psychopaths do not like the human race. They are racist. Now, in 1924, by 1924, I should say, Congress, through its Virginia state legislature, came up with the 1924 Racial Integrity Act. And in this, they penciled in Nazi Germany, of course, because they said that Part of the racial integrity is not only removing black and off-color human beings, but also those that were deemed mentally infirm, which of course takes the action of a psychiatrist diagnosing. This is what opened the door. To Nazi Germany. Hitler joined the Confederacy in 1933 with his acts of enablement, the same acts of enablement that the states had employed back starting in 1802. Now this big rush, and you heard about it by saying, oh, you know, such and such is the, is the 39th state, such and such is the 15th state. Those were all acts of enablement, allowing each national or foreign state to act as the federal state. And Hitler said it best in his act of enablement because he actually identified who the Reichstag was, which is the American Congress, federal state, or Reichstag, the Confederacy. Now, of course, out of those, each state constitution established the Reichsrat, or the national state. And remember, this is back starting in 1802 when they came in with the 1802 Indemnification Convention, indemnifying by commission all of humanity, or all of humanity that Congress could control at that time. It didn't get global governance until 1941. So this report is from NBCNews.com. Pancliffe, black youth, shot himself to death this corner. Coroner's report obtained exclusively by NBC News directly contradicts the police version of how a 22-year-old black man died in the back seat of a Louisiana police cruiser earlier this year, but still says the man whose hands were cuffed behind his back shot himself. In a press release issued March 3rd, the day he died, the Louisiana State Police said Victor White III apparently shot himself in an Iberia Parish police car, according to police statement, while had White had his hands cuffed behind his back when he shot himself in the back. 
But according to the full final report of the Iberian Police Parish Coroner, which was released nearly six months later and obtained exclusively by NBC News, White was shot in the front, not the back. The bullet entered his right chest and exited under his left armpit. White was left-handed, according to family members. According to the report, the forensic pathologist found gunshot residue in the wound but not the sort of stifling that close-range shot can sometimes produce. He also found abrasions on White's face. And yet, despite the contradictions, and even though White's hands were never tested for gunpowder residue, the Iberia Parish Coroner still supported the central contention of the initial police statement issued back in March. Dr. Carl Ditch ruled that White shot himself and declared his death a suicide. I don't know about you, but uh, calling out for the coroner's arrest would be a very good starting point in removing the criminal enterprise from your neighborhood in Louisiana. A child was shot in the front while he was handcuffed in the back. Not at close range, according to the coroner. He was a victim of an execution. He wasn't the victim of a suicide. He was executed in the back of a police car while he was handcuffed behind his back. White's father still has questions. I have questions. I have questions. When is the FBI agent involved in the shooting death of this child going to be arrested? And when is the coroner, who is in con criminal confederacy with this guy, arrested? When will that happen? I know that you want to believe something else has just occurred. Something else did not occur. A child was murdered by FBI at behest of corporate counsel. And the coroner is here in NBC News covering this up. You have the evidence before you. It's up to you whether or not you're going to crucify Jesus or you're going to crucify Barabbas. There are no other options. Different to see in front page mag.com, the racist discriminating Democratic Party, Ron Torres Hyun is one of America's most prolific and respected public relations experts. Torres Hyun is the founder, president, and CEO of 5W Public Relations, one of 25 largest independent American PR firms, which was named PR Agency of the Year by the American Business Awards. He's a best selling author of four immediately released Shape, Minds, Build, Brands, and Deliver Results with Game Changing Public Relations, and quote, a book known as an industry must read. Of course, he's the author of this hit piece against the Democratic Party, so we'll just use that word once the Democratic Party, but please note that you can insert Republican, Libertarian, Christian, Jew. Islam, whatever word you want to put there, if you replace it with Congress, it's much easier on the mind. So Congress, the party of slavery, which openly practices the only form of discrimination that is acceptable today in American politics, class warfare and discrimination against the successful yesterday for the third time in recent weeks, wrongly accused the Republican Party of racism. It wasn't any party, it was just Congress discharging congressional bankruptcy. Congress really doesn't like competition. And the most profound thing for me to have throughout all of this experience is that they target blacks and they target low income and they target the meekest or what appears to be the meekest of Congress's tactics are designed to always be deceitful. If they thought they could win, of course, they would face us in hand-to-hand -hand battle. But they will not because they are skulking and they are hiding, they are conniving, 
as snakes in the grass and clearly evidenced to be the entity in the garden without a doubt so PR rep is trying to formulate in the mind that there's a, such a thing as Republican Democrat and that there's somehow a difference between a psychopath and another psychopath which of course is evidenced here and Bone Rocker show throughout a very long time, or what appears to be an entire lifetime, anyway. We, um, evidence these things. From Huffington Post.co.uk. Police Commissioner Sean Wright will be suspended by labor if he does not resign. Now, since this, there's an update, um, I heard, but I cannot confirm that he has resigned. Um, labor will suspend South Yorkshire's Police and Crime Commissioner Sean Wright from the party if he's not resigned by the morning, a labor source said earlier. Home Secretary Theresa May added a rap to rapidly growing pressure on Mr. Wright following the publication of a damning report into child abuse in Rotterdam by appearing to join calls for him to quit his post. Senior Labour figures included Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper have said Mr. Wright must resign as PCC because of his previous involvement as a Labour councillor in the town. Keeping further pressure on him, a labor source says, quote, we were given Sean Wright time, we have given Sean Wright time to reflect. If he's not resigned by morning, he, we will suspend him from the Labor Party. Mr. Wright was a council cabinet member responsible for children's services in Rotherham from 2005 through 2010 in the middle of a 16-year period when, according to the report, 1,400 youngsters suffered wide-scale sexual exploitation including a gang rapes, grooming and trafficking. So far he's, he's resisted pressure for him to leave the post, insisting he had no knowledge of the industrial scale of the child abuse when he was a labor counselor in the town. Speaking today in Dumfries, Miss May said it was not her job to select or dismiss police and crime commissioners, but appeared to suggest he should heed calls from his own party to go, she said. Sean Wright obviously has had involvement in this both as his role as a counselor and obviously he's now the police and crime commissioner. He's the one that was doling out the monies for these commission states and they would not exist without those commissions. And of course private investment as we've seen since the loss of their commissions last year which has been quite profound. Once they lost treasury commission all of these investors started trolling around and investing in these ventures, hedging those bets, and in the end it evidenced their own works. It said, well, they support human trafficking, child trafficking, child sex trafficking, female sex trafficking, female trafficking, and the male slave labor market. As written of, of course, in the 2009 report on human trafficking out of the UN, including including their own finances and what is made by these psychopaths trafficking our children to each other and themselves. Let's see, I'd like to see a bit more accountability than a uh, court of public opinion, I'll tell you that much. Interesting to say the least. Sick. Very concerning shirt. I know that oh, we don't talk about uh, clothing designs and clothing effects. But uh, CNN is reporting this week a retailer pulls shirt reminiscent of Holocaust off the shelves, and indeed, it's got a little gold star of David on his shirt. It's white and black stripes indicating a little prisoner might be wearing something like that and it's very sick to see. Although the color blue doesn't help. It helps when 
there's no sarcasm and no joking around between corporations about how much they enjoy being Nazi Germany and calling the overhead when overhead gets too great. From the New Yorker.com, Between the World and Ferguson. Quote, when I was 18, I stumbled across Richard White's poem, Between the World and Me. The poem, a retelling of a lynching, shook me because while the narrator relays the details in the first person, the actual victim of the brutal ritual is another man unknown to him and unknown to us. The poem is about the way in which history is an animate force and how we are witnesses to the past, even to that portion of it that transpired before we were born. He writes, quote, Darkness screamed with thirsty voices, and the witnesses rose and lived. The dry bones stirred, rattled, lifted, melting themselves into my bones. The gray ashes formed flesh, firm and black, entering into my flesh. End quote. Nothing save random fortune separated the fate of the man who died from that of the telling the story Aaron Wack and Isabel Wilkerson have both written compelling about the long shadow of lynching. It is too often a deliberately forgotten element of the American past, one that is nonetheless felt everywhere in Ferguson, Missouri, where protesters followed the shooting of Michael Brown, who was 18 years old by a police officer. One can't make sense of how Brown's community perceived those events without first understanding the way that neglected history has survived among black people, a traumatized memory handed down a Jim Crow inheritance. It took 16 days for Brown's body to be buried, an extended postscript that included three separate autopsies. The emergence of dueling interpretations of his last moments and the resolution of precisely nothing about how race, media, and policing operate in the United States. A year ago, people gathered in anticipation of a verdict in the trial of George Zimmerman, the man who killed Trayvon Martin. During the case, images of people wearing hoodies, as Martin had when he was shot, proliferated on social media. This month, it has been portraits of people with their hands raised in recognition of a number of written accounts that Brown tried to surrender before being shot by police officer Darren Wilson. Wilson, according to press reports, has told people that Brown was running at him. The idea in both instances is that, like Wright's, Wright's narrator, any of us could be Martin Brown or one of the hundreds of others who have died under questionable circumstances. There's a disturbing sense that this is how we spend our summers now, submerged in outrage, demonstrating yet again the hard parameters of public sympathy and the damnable, tiresome burden of racism. In the days after 9-11, it was common to hear people say that it was the first time Americans had really experienced terrorism on their own soil. Those sentiments were historically wrong and willfully put aside. Acts that were organized on a large scale had a political goal and were committed with the specific intention of being nightmarishly memorable. The death cult that was lynching furnished this country with such spectacles for half a century. The tallies vary, but by some estimates, there were 3,300 lynchings in the decades between the end of the reconstruction of the civil rights area, era. We know intuitively, not abstractly, about terrorism's theatrical intent. The sight of Michael Brown sprawled on Canton, Canfield Drive for hours in the August sun, dead at the hands of an officer who was unarmed for a week, recalled that memory. It had the effect of reminding that crowd of spontaneous mourners of their own refuted humanity. A single death can be understood as a collective threat. The media didn't whip up these concerns among the black population. History did that. For 15 days this month, people marched in heat, thunderstorms, amid tear gas, despite the warnings of police styled as militia, undeterred by the tear gas or the obstinacy, obstinacy of the local bureaucracy. They persisted despite the taint that opportunistic violence and looting imposed upon their efforts. Linda Chavez wondered on Fox News whether the, quote, unarmed teen mantra, and quote, really fit Brown who was six feet four, nearly 300 pounds, and had been caught on video shoplifting, and it perhaps bears repeating only a teen and was unarmed. 
Chavez was roundly criticized, but she was really only guilty of saying aloud what many others had thought. Whatever happened or did not happen between Michael Brown and Darren Wilson on a winding scale street in the middle of the afternoon in a nondescript outpost on the edge of a mid-sized city, wherever we imagine, we know of the teen anger, the salient fact is that he did not live long enough to cultivate his own answers. I spent days in Ferguson, and in that time I developed a kind of in-between the world and Ferguson view of events surrounding Brown's death. I was once a linebacker, size 18-year-old too. What I knew then, what black people had been required to know, is that there are few things more dangerous than the perception of one that is a danger. I'm embarrassed to recall that my adolescent love of words doubled as a strategy to assuage those fears. It was both a pitiable desire for acceptance and a practical necessity for survival. I know to this day the element of inadvertent intimidation that colors the most innocuous interactions, particularly with white people. There are protocols for this. I sometimes let it slip that I'm a professor or that I'm scarcely even familiar with the rules of football. Minor biographical facts that stand in for a broader unspoken statement of reassurance. There is no danger here. And the insult is civil small talk and feeble smiles and a sense of having compromised. Other times in an elevator or crossing a darkened parking lot when I'm six feet away from the world remains between us. I remain silent and simply let whatever miasma of stereotype or fear might be there fill the void. It is so heart-wrenching to read of this writer. Because like so many other black human beings, he has been listed as a pariah by Congress. Everyone has made it to the terror watch list since the 1947 National Security Act. This is humanity is the enemy of the national state and that national security is the highest priority. If you want to read that story, it was in the New Yorker and it was written by Jelani Cobb. Beautiful, beautiful beautiful piece and I am so sorrow filled to to read once again in the world of experience when people feel fear him without any reason whatsoever well, years ago Wall Street Journal did a report on how society fear, fears men. Have we taught our children to fear men? Since that article, of course, the writer fears whacked about three years later, I believe it was. Something happened. And men are a protector. And Congress was haunting us with Stasi agents and, and related war tools and tactics, legal actions, acts of Congress, probate and family court. There is nothing to stop them except for our males. And of course, that's what you're experiencing now. We're watching the accountability start to kick in here, but You are supposed to love each other. You're human beings. There are so many exactly like Jelani Cobb. You know, years ago, when I ran into my absolutely best friend for the first time, some profound experiences. I'm tired of the shame. I'm tired of 
remember everyone experiencing shame because they are not this or they are this or that. The indoctrination has taken away humanity. Humanity is not seeing each other as they are, seeing each other as a perceived threat to themselves, as Mr. Cobb writes so profoundly. Very sad days indeed that these things can occur for so very long. And these attorneys get away with it for what seems like forever. For those experiencing hunger and famine, from the New York Times.com, grain piles up, waiting for a ride as trains move North Dakota oil. Fargo, North Dakota, the furious pace of energy exploration in North Dakota is creating a crisis for farmers whose grain shipments have been held up by a vast new movement of oil by rail, leading to millions of dollars in agricultural losses and slower production for breakfast cereal giants like General Mills. The backlog is only going to get worse, farmers said, as they prepared this week for what is expected to be a record crop of wheat and soybeans. Quote, if we can't get this stuff out soon, a lot of it is simply going to go on the ground and rot. End quote, said Bill Heil, who grows soybeans, wheat, and sugar beets in the town of Castleton, about 20 miles west of here. Although the energy boom in North Dakota has led to a 2.8% unemployment rate, the lowest in the nation, the downside has been harder times for farmers who have long been mainstays of the state's economy. Agriculture was North Dakota's number one industry for decades, representing a quarter of its economic base. But recent statistics show that oil and gas have become the biggest contributors to the state's gross domestic product. Well, and it also uh, increases the productivity of production if you uh, decrease the supply to increase the demand by uh, accidental means, perhaps. Now, this is willful that this wheat is laying on the ground and rotting. And of course this record crop will never come to fruition because you have bureaucracy in the middle that require, require according to the rules of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, that to increase inflation, you have to decrease the supply of things. If you have a record crop somewhere, why? Well, you might be able to feed humanity. And we don't want that because we're adhering to the National Security Act of 1947. Once again, folks, if you enjoy this and you enjoy your creative famine, hunger, homelessness, disease, discomfort, and related states of imprisonment and the United States Incorporated, Continue patronizing it and calling it your father. Because it's sure doing a bang up job, isn't it? Bang up job. Great job. Starving human beings. Dead children in the street, gone down by FBI. My children. Your children. Our children. And this wasted land that to be used for so many other things other than the attorney and minion. Drew Barrymore's half-sister died from drug overdose, Corner says. It's interesting that she had a prescription for methadone, tramadol, and nordiazepam in her system, along with methamphetamine and alcohol. I don't see any charges against any prescriber, and sadly I don't see the statistics that Drew Barrymore's sister was one of 42 females that die each and every day in the United States Incorporated from prescription drug overdose. It is a eugenics program. Prescriptions, drugs, 
the type that we're referring to, uh, Oxycontin, Demerol, Vicodin, Lortab, uh, by, uh, Valium, Xanax, any form of lorazepam, diazepam, benzodiazepine, all of these things shut down the bodily functions of the body. Yesterday, I, I got so sick, I was, there was a commercial that came on, and it was playing this new uh, ADHD medication, and it starts out with the side effect of death, stroke, heart attack, then it goes on and it explains, well, it could cause seizure activity and irritability and, and you know, impossible sleeping conditions. Treating what used to be called childhood, what is now known as ADHD, this killer drug promoted by none other than psychiatrists and attorneys cashing in who sits on these boards at these pharmaceutical companies. It's not a pharmaceutical. It's an attorney. And who's sitting on the board of these hospitals, medical boards, attorneys, insurance conglomerates. What are we doing? What is going on here that parents are feeding their children things that have side effects of death, stroke, heart attack, you name it? Now, Aldous Huxley spoke those things. He said within the next generation. Everybody's going to be so doped up, they won't even care. Uh, let me go get that quote for you, because it's very interesting. And uh, as well as his speech, I, I urge everybody to listen to this speech that he gave at um, Sanford. I mean, it sounds like he's uh, a very bad guy, but he's in there and he said, look, this is where we're heading. This is where things are heading. He wasn't saying, I want to do this. So this is where they're heading. And it was the same thing with um, Malthus. Thomas Malthus only theorized the nature of rent. Malthusian theory, though, or Malthusian, uh, Malthusian policy is what Congress had already been doing since Rome. You can see that in the agrarian laws way back when. Quote, it seems to me perfectly in the cards that there will be within the next generation or so a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda, brainwashing, or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods. Of course that is Aldous Huxley. I believe that was in 1861, if I'm not mistaken. You can find the full audio over on archive.org details Aldous Huxley, The Ultimate Revelation. Revolution, sorry, and it's about 44 minutes long. And um, I, I sometimes play it also on No Borders Radio when I've got the uh, um, broadcaster going. But uh, I urge everybody to listen to that because it's, it's actually identical to what was said in the FDA and Ethics Commission contracts that they have with each other to use human beings as human test subjects, which is says right in their 2006 rules of procedure, the FDA.
Defense Rest in Blackwater Trial. I haven't seen the updates on that yet. Um, you know, the RT was revealing something very profound this week about the Oklahoma City bombing. And um, in the Church Committee Reports, Book 2 of the Church Committee Reports, um, gosh, I can't remember the name of it offhand. It was regarding the rights of American citizens, though. Um, it says, hey, look, the FBI does this stuff on the ground. And book 4 says, sure enough, the CIA is the production company that enables this stuff on the ground. And um, I urge everybody to go through the church committee reports. I know that that's a lot of stuff to read. I did read book four. That's located over on YouTube, Tiny K32 on YouTube. Uh, I think it's in a couple parts. You can also find it on Bonus Entertainment, who is my producer. From RT.com, Oklahoma City bombing claims of a second accomplice in FBI intimidation, which is funny. Because the very first opening paragraph says, The FBI has been ordered to investigate allegations. They claim the agency intimidated a witness and compelled him not to testify at a recent trial over evidence relating to the Oklahoma City body bombing. <laughs> that, that's like uh, Charles Manson issuing an order not to investigate, of course. Rick Perry's good at that stuff, too. According to the Salt Lake Tribune, U.S. District Judge Clark Wadoob scheduled a November 13th hearing on the matter in which Utah Attorney Jesse Trentadu accused the FBI uh, um, of threatening to eliminate a former undercover agent's health benefits if he took the stand. Former agent reportedly knew convicted bomber Timothy McVeigh. Of course they did. Of course they did. If you have a terror threat on the ground, you have a government that's going to swoop right in and sweep you off your feet and offer you hearts and minds and save you from that threat that's created only by it. It makes you want to say a, a new phrase, possibly Roman conquistadors or uh, something equivalent. It's the same thing over and over again, wearing different masks. One day they're Spaniard, and the next day they're French, Italian. One day they look like Obama, and the next day, poof, you've got a pontiff in a pointy hat. Same thing, different faces. Same Rome. Same Spain, same Portugal, same British East Indian Trading Corporation, same shipping and navigation, and I think I finally got Bo on the line. Are you there, Bo? Hi, yeah, what's up? Awesome. I was running out of stuff to say, and I'm sure All I was right, yeah, this sorry. Week. Well, this is just uh, 8 to 10's just kind of a bad time. It seems to be my most productive time of the day, and then, um, um, yeah, so that's why I do the 10 to the 12 thing. But so yeah, I've been just listening in and uh, uh, off and on. Um, uh, what do you want to talk about? Racism. I I'm so sick of this. The attempts of Congress to point at Syrians and say they're the culprit, and point at Iraqis and say they're the culprit, and point at Americans and say they're the culprit. And I was so pissed. I I want to just oh, I wanted to scream this week when I saw Al Sharpton come out. And he blamed America for the shooting of uh, Michael Brown. He didn't blame the FBI. He didn't blame himself. He didn't blame anybody oh. else. But he played the racism card and made sure right. that Americans felt bad for this occurrence. When it wasn't, it wasn't a citizen who gunned down Michael Brown. It was the FBI. And you know, Al Sharpton, he always moves in when there's somebody on their knees to uh, get out that money and, and the financial aspect of the, it comes from the back end of, of uh, low intensity conflict and fourth generation warfare. Yeah, well, he's a tool. I'm sick of seeing him. I'm he's, sick of he's only a tool. Um, Reverend Jesse Jackson is a tool. I mean, they don't work directly for Congress, but they, they are in league with Congress. Absolutely. Now, we've broken down the definition of the word league here I don't know how many times. And this is why I keep throwing this out there to the patriots. Are you sure you want to 
uh, align yourself with them. Because on one side you got the Republicans and Democrats and Libertarians and, you know, you know, the people saying, oh, they're not following the Constitution. And then on the other side you got the Constitution, and both sides lead to Rome. The Constitution was just modeled after the Magna Carta, which was a mechanism to steal kingdoms. Absolutely. You've seen die without a day, and that's... That's what makes the world go round. The Magna Carta was signed, seen, die without a day, and it's been just simply uh, restructured since because it, it's without an ending to it. With seen, die means without an ending, without a, without a day, without a death, and so it just moves on and on. And it comes the American Constitution. Well, first, actually, um, you know, you, you can see the American Constitution prior to that. The, the Bill of Rights was a bill of reviver, and that is actually a court action and it says well these folks are still missing so I'm gonna come in on their behalf and I'm gonna take up you know uh, the authority here as their executor to, to uh, make sure that everybody's okay and, and um, it's been human trafficking ever since yeah and what do we get we get a right sold back to us we can purchase back from the law merchant and further uh, you know, undersign our contract with this thing that is uh, got many faces. I like Congress because it says uh, what it is. Um, it means with transgression. Well, I've been talking about sad stuff all day because I'm so upset over this racism that Congress is promoting and all of these wars. It's still, it's calling out for help and nobody's helping it. That was the funniest thing about um, the last couple of days is that uh, you're trying to rally for a war and they're on this campaign, uh, Kerry and, and uh, Oblava there, and they're not finding supporters to invest in their ventures, which has been interesting. Even Germany turned it down this time. Maybe it's too hot out there or something, but it was very profound to see Germany turn them down. Oh, and we've got all these governments, quote unquote, out there in trouble. France, uh, I think you covered France going bankrupt or uh, dissolving, 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 dissolving their current parliament. Yep, and then they all resigned and then they came back into play. It was cute because actually during that time, it looked like, what's her name, finally got married of the CFR, um, Angelina Jolie, and what's his name, Brad Pitt, or whatever. Yeah, I saw that, I for what, nine years were... together, or something they were saying, and right. and, and now she's got him in the, in the shoot there in with the that shoot. contract, yeah. now uh, look for a divorce soon to follow Absolutely. with the redistribution schematic Absolutely. by yours truly, Angelina Jolie. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pr promoting that it's good to get your breast chopped off by the medical industry. Absolutely. I, oh, I can't stand watching any of her movies anymore just after I've learned what she is. No, oh, and that's good. It's good to boycott that kind of thing. And you know, there's other things that have been rumored, although I don't have evidence of, um, you know, where she goes to, to adopt children and things like that. And I'd like to see more investigations into where she's picking up these children and, and how she's getting them and what she's doing to them. The review I heard on Maleficent, I think it's called. <laughs> Maleficent, Maleficent, I don't know. Uh, but it's a complete hit on men. Total feminism, and women should have all these rights, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. I'll have, I may want to watch that just to dig out the propaganda on it. But I think Stefan Molax actually already did a pretty good uh, rundown on it. Well, I want some good news. Do you have any good news? You heard about Perry, right? About him being, um, his gun rights were confiscated and all that good stuff. Yep, no <coughs> gun rights for Perry. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, by what, te Texas law, did they say? Uh, oh, yeah, I was watching, reading that at the first of the hour, and it was, like, uh, very profound to see that they're actually falling through because this smug uh, Perry here, he's... He's, he's smug shot. He's just so smug and he's grinning and smiling. It's just another day of of uh, being a jester to him. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, yesterday we started seeing that he's. It, it looks like there might be teeth and they're, maybe they're not putting on a show. I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait this out and see what happens. But um, it'll be interesting nonetheless.
Yeah, well, I mean, and he's a big player. There's no doubt about that. I talked about that a little bit last night, how he's traded on Dun & Bradstreet under the Department of Health and Human Services and the General Co General Council. And you can find this by going to Dun & Bradstreet, running the search for yourself, and then uh, switch the uh, state to Texas for him. A lot of them you'll find in Washington, D.C. or Delaware, but his is in Texas. Right. Now it's all over, but main um, headquarters is there in that trafficking hub, of course. And, and um, you know, that was years ago. The house case evidenced all of that, you know, up, right on up to Perry trafficking, quote, throwaway children. And um, that case involved, you know, twins that were taken off of their parents very soon after birth because of the shock. And, the, and the, these things are all written. Now, twinning, um, T. Paul Schultz uh, does sociology writings on feminism and, and uh, the shock doctrine implication of multiple births. And it's very profound to see because the intent is creating not only the environment and habitat for that to occur by uh, forced breeding methods, uh, but the back end of that is also, you know, the shock that it, it, it presents when, you know, teenagers or, or whatever already under the force of fourth generation law intensity conflict uh, measures, you know, is shocked with a multiple birth, and that, that does, it shocks them into stopping the breeding, and the, these articles are all over the place. It's an engineered system of uh, forced breeding, forced productive uh, farming that appears to be somebody's choice when in reality it's not a choice. Uh, let's see here. I had some more articles I sent you earlier. Did you go through all of those? or? Uh, not a lot of them today. I was going through the stuff that I had on my wall earlier because I wasn't prepared before the show like I should have been. Okay. I'm always scared to click on Skype because I don't know what's in there and if it's going to have a commercial or... I really like how the Washington Times and New York Times, um, a lot of these are no longer playing the loud advertisements, which is very beautiful. And they're, they're writing them where the font is not so egregiously heavy and there's not such a lot of muss and fuss going on. It's, it's nice to see. Well, here we got one here. Um... Falmouth lawyer charged with possessing child pornography. A uh, local attorney was arrested Wednesday morning by Maine State Police for allegedly possessing child pornography. Lawrence Winger, 63, of 12 Bayshore Drive, was arrested by the Computer Crimes Unit. He came to the attention of state police within the last month, according to spokesman Steve McClausland. Steve McClausland of the main Department of Public Safety. Winger, that's good, public safety, yeah, because these types are uh, a harm on humanity. We, Winger, who has a law office in Portland, is charged with possessing sexually explicit material of someone under the age of 12. Uh. This computer had dozens of images and videos of child porn, according to McClausland. He sees his computer, and after the initial review, they describe what they found on it. McClausland said it will be a complete forensic examination of the computer done at the computer crime lab in Ballasboro sometime in the near future. I hate it when they do that. Is he in jail or out? Uh, he said there are no known main victims in the images, and Winger was taken to Cumberland County Jail in Portland, where he was in the process of paying $500 bail. So he, so he gets to get like an hour's worth of attorney fees out of his pocket right. and bail out and go out right. there and do God knows what else. Right. So these attorneys I don't like are, that. Yeah, it looks like these attorneys are playing a game. Um, let me get this. I'll save that one. Um, so this realtor, real estate company, did you see this one that uh, has separate entrances? Uh, it was on the New York Times. Poor door in a New York tower opens a fight over affordable housing. 
A 33-story glassy tower rising on Manhattan's waterfront will offer all the extras that a condo buyer paying up to $25 million would expect by concierge service, entertainment rooms, and unobstructed views of the Hudson Rivers and miles beyond. The project will also cater to renters who make no more than about 50000 They will not share the same perks, and they will also not share the same entrance. They have the different door. This is like a reminiscent of the the 60s. This is sick. Classification. That's a the action of genocide itself. One of the elements of genocide is to classify and dehumanize, and they're using separate doors at this brand new condominium. Yeah, that's right. You want to talk about five. racism, and again with everything that's presented to us by the corporate governance which is run by attorneys, is designed to pit us all against one another. Now, you can see right there that uh, they're condemning this society to a, a very horrible future if this continues. And that's exactly why when we discovered the way to hold them accountable under the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity is to just do it. I mean, I want to get this done. I'm tired of hearing, uh, you know, uh, people talk about it and talk about all the problems. Well, this all is right? We're not just here to, you know, tell you about what's going on. We're here to tell you what we did and let you know uh, what the deal is and what the, what the future can be like here. We just need to get people educated and on board with the public law because uh, their whole system is set up under private acts and acts of commerce where the uh, um, laws is set up that uh, when law means to lay down and uh, what we're laying down to is these private acts and acts of commerce 27 code of federal regulations 72.11 says all crimes are commercial okay now that doesn't speak to anything to do with harm against humanity that's why these attorneys justify in their own mind that it's okay to have your minion cops off somebody when it benefits their pocketbooks this one is interesting because like Ferguson that was created out of whatever with the white law enforcement the white corporate council the white PR firm and all of these white things they were established years ago identically to how this is established now it is not a citizen that is building this condominium it is not a anything other than corporate governance and it is Mayor Bill de Blasio who is pushing for the construction of this new condominium with quote affordable housing elsewhere with separate doors now, this is the action of genocide this is the first form of genocide how these little um, places of conflict are created they do this on purpose it's a business schematic and then they tell us that we're racist when they start popping us off or robbing us and I have so many examples of that, but we only have two minutes left. Do you have anything else to add for tonight? I'm sorry I didn't raise you earlier, but uh, it's, just, it's been a profound week. I mean, lots, it, many, 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 many good things have occurred. I'm just absolutely overwhelmed. And, of course, um, Thursday, as you said, is kind of a peak night and uh, worn out by Thursday. <laughs> well... Well, and there it goes again. I am just so sick of Windows. I, I'm, I'm fighting with Windows still on my laptop, and it's just a POS, if you know what I mean. And got got, got my main system running on um, Ubuntu. You know, I'm so tired of Microsoft's garbage. I mean, they fill you up with all this extra stuff and plugging up the pipes in the back end. All right, I'm just venting right now, but. Um, Somebody in China is developing an operating system that's relative to Windows, and I was looking at that this week, but I can't recall where it was, but hopefully I'll have that information 
uh, later on. It sounded interesting because I, I really like the functionality of Windows, but I don't like Windows because of the advertisements and all of the uh, how heavy it is and everything. I mean, it's just. It was designed to make you have to buy a faster computer with more RAM. You know, it's planned obsolescence. And again, that's what you get from these attorneys. It's like, how can we uh, make them keep buying? Well, make stuff to break. Right. We'll be back on Saturday, folks. Don't miss the public law tomorrow night with Bo and I right here at TemmyPepperman.org. Be well, everyone. Yeah, that's the time that I can actually get to.